Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for not letting my mom vent to me about my miscarriage? I found out on Friday at my 8-week ultrasound that the fetus stopped growing at 6 weeks and has no heartbeat. I am okay, bummed, but okay. This was our first try and I know this is common. My mother has severe anxiety and has been checking on me multiple times a day through texts and calls throughout the pregnancy. To say I felt smothered would be an understatement, but I walk on eggshells around her so I didn't say anything. She rarely respects boundaries. I called and told her the news when I found out and she was obviously hurt as well. I didn't speak to her Saturday, but texted her that husband and I are okay. I also texted her Sunday morning. On Sunday afternoon she calls me in tears that I'm ignoring her, I'm cruel, and her feelings matter too. I told her I wasn't ignoring her, but I was also still processing what happened, and that it happened to me not her. I thank her for all her help through this process, but that I need alone time. She says I should have warned her and she is hurting too. She ends up hanging up on me after I reiterate that I need time to process what happened, and frankly, I wanted a few days alone with my husband. She knows I'm a quiet and introverted person. I know she is social extrovert who wants to discuss every emotion exactly when she feels it and I don't, especially when I don't know my emotions yet. My brother and dad, divorced, agree that she takes things to extremes and I need to take care of myself first. Am I the a-hole? Was I supposed to be her shoulder to cry on when the trauma happened to me? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your mom sounds like a narcissist. I can't imagine demanding someone who went through trauma comfort me through their pain. I have a narc mom, so I'm not saying that can't be the case, but you would be shocked to know how ridiculously common it is for otherwise normal people to dump in word like this. People often don't know what to say in the face of a tragedy, and end up talking about their own feelings on the matter to people who are even closer to the loss, even though it's completely counterproductive and puts the most grieving person in the position of having to comfort co-workers, extended family members, etc. Not the a-hole. Someone, not you, needs to introduce her to the ring theory of grief. You provide support slash space, whatever is needed, to the more central ring, you, and seek support from an outer ring anyone but you and your husband. I would recommend placing her on an info diet if she is going to use the information you are providing her to guilt you. Yes. I was scrolling through the comments hoping someone had brought up ring theory. It's possible mom can learn appropriate behavior after being taught the ring theory, I think. Not the a-hole. She shouldn't be making this about her. Or go vent to literally anyone else, not the person who actually had the miscarriage. Edit. Thank you to every single one of you for taking the time to offer your advice and kind words. It's hard to navigate your own emotions when you feel responsible for someone else's so reading your responses really gave me the nudge I needed. I'm going to talk to my therapist, which I'm sure they'll tell me the exact same thing as you guys, I'm going to send my mom the ring theory of grief link, let her know she crossed a boundary, stomped and spit on it, really. I'll be going low contact for the foreseeable future and she is not to know anything about a future pregnancy until I decide otherwise. Next story. Am I the a-hole for ruining the birthday celebration my dad planned for me? For months my dad has been talking about celebrating my 21st B-Day that was this past Friday. To be honest, I wasn't that psyched about it, but he was promising it was gonna be great and he's been wanting to celebrate this specific birthday for years. I'm gonna start by saying, I don't like drinking at all. I've tried for years at parties and I hate it. I don't like the taste, I don't like the way it makes me feel, and I just don't like alcohol because of what it's done to my family. My grandpa, my dad's dad, was a really bad alcoholic, and from what I heard, his dad was too, my great grandpa. It was hard seeing him messed up for so many years until it killed him. My dad's not at his level of drinking, he rarely drinks, but when he does, it's like he becomes a drunk frat boy. Him and my uncle. They're not fun to be around when they are drunk with friends, but he convinced me to take a boy's trip to my uncle's cabin for the weekend, and he convinced my mom to let it be just us guys. It was them plus six of their buddies, everyone drinking. I only barely finished half a beer but they were going at it. My dad wanted to do shots with me but I didn't want to. Was fine with watching them do it but not me. I don't know, it makes me want to vomit. The drunker they got at night, the more my dad kept being mean to me about not drinking. Him and my uncle kept telling me to stop being a pissy and I'll like it. They were just being a bunch of rowdy butts and wouldn't leave me alone about not drinking. I got fed up with it, so I told my dad I was done being treated like that when I've already told him I don't like to drink. Then I drove back home at 2am. 
got some calls from them telling me to come back, and all I did was tell my dad I got home safe and shut off my phone. My mom was surprised to see me back in the morning since we were supposed to stay up there until Monday morning. When I told her everything that happened, she was pissed off. She had that death look in her eyes. They got into a fight when my dad got home. Obviously, he was hung over so already in a bad mood. But he came to my room and started telling me crap. He said I ruined an important night that he was hoping to share with me for years, and can't believe I'd just leave so rudely like that when he was trying to bond his father slash son. My dad looked legitimately disappointed. This is something he and my uncle did with their dad, so he wanted to continue that tradition with me. He's mad I ruined the birthday celebration, and my mom's mad at him and my uncle for bullying me to drink. It's so serious right now, they're not even talking to each other, and my dad is being pretty cold with me. I keep going from being mad at him for being the way he was treating me, to feeling guilty about messing up the party since I know he was excited about drinking with me. Was I an a-hole? Not the a-hole. Your dad needs to grow the f up, learn to respect people's wishes, and make some actual effort into getting to know you. He didn't want to celebrate with you, he wanted an excuse to get drunk with other people, and you were the excuse. He's mad because he got called out on it. Don't feel bad, this is not your fault. Not the a-hole at all. You didn't ruin anything. Your dad did that. It sounds like you made everything perfectly clear beforehand too. I really hate people with this attitude. Drink or you are a pissy. You'll love it. I occasionally give up drinking because reasons. Often for more than a year at a time. So I've had this exact thing. Over and over again. They won't take no for an answer. And they are also talking a bunch of repetitive BS too. Ugh. Frankly, it's likely worse for you. Your reasons for not drinking are better, you hate it, pretty significant, and bad memories. It sounds like your dad is trying to relive his glory days in a wildly inappropriate way. You are not him. I hate the whole man up and the stop being a pissy thing too, which is all I kept hearing from them that night. Never understood why not drinking isn't manly to be honest. 100% not the a-hole. Your dad was a selfish coont, he organized himself a party to celebrate your 21st. That's insane. Related, I was married to an alcoholic and being around that colors your view of drinking, so understand how full a cabin trip with heavy drinking would be. Yes. His 21st birthday was more like a party for his dad. I get how traditions can be sad to let go of but not every kid's the same FFS. His dad should try something else with him. Establish a new tradition, something which both of you all like. Not the a-hole. Next story is titled. Am I the a-hole for telling mother-in-law we've moved because we like the house? I recently came into enough money that I can now be a stay-at-home mom, and we were able to pay off our home, sell it, and get a small mortgage on a nicer house in a rural area. Our issue is, husband and his family all live within 5 miles of mother-in-law but we aren't very close with them. We didn't tell any of his siblings about my money or my job, and only told mother-in-law once the sale had been finalized, and paperwork signed for the new house. When husband updated her so she had our new address, she didn't say much other than, I'm not sure how I feel about this, I need some time to decide. Which we thought was a bit strange but we left her to it because we are busy trying to move house with a toddler during lockdown. I do not recommend. After a few days, she called husband back and said she'd thought about it and discussed it with his sister and does not approve nor give us her blessing, as she thinks it's irresponsible to not stay in a house we now outright own, and instead take on more debt just to move far away from the family. He tried to explain to her that the new mortgage would only take 10 years, paying what we used to pay monthly anyway. With regards to far away it's only 33 miles from our current home and is closer to husband's job. Mother-in-law said she felt we'd chosen the new house specifically because it's further from her to make it difficult to visit. I jumped in, she was on speakerphone, to try to assure her the only reason we chose a house in that area is because we love the house. She asked husband to take her off speaker, at which point, she berated him for letting me lie and insulting her intelligence, since nobody moves to a new area just because they like a house. She said my lie being so obvious just proved we didn't care about keeping her in our baby's life and that I was trying to pull husband away from his family, and he needs to rethink his decisions. He ended the call and basically said she'd made her bed and can now lie in it but did say he thinks me jumping in with an emotional reason for the move rather than the logistics he was telling her, probably made her feel I was dismissing them both, and that's why she got upset. Was I the a-hole for saying we're moving because we love the new house? Now for the top comments. 
not the a-hole. Mother-in-law's reasoning is completely absurd, as if the universe revolves around her, and how she must have been the first point of concern when your family picked a new house. Very bizarre. As for you interjecting with your reason, it's a perfectly valid reason. You could have picked a reason as logical as Spock and she'd still be pissy. You can't logic someone out of a position they didn't logic themselves into. Thank you. I think her issue stems from her children all choosing to live so near to her, which we did too initially, and my husband has grown further from them over the years, so us going against the norm might come across as trying to spite them. The logic thing is just how they all talk to each other. It's always facts and figures to prove who's right and by how much. None of them are very emotive, my brother-in-law called me hysterical when he heard I shed a tear during Mamma Mia too. So my interjection was probably seen more as an outburst than a reassurance. Not the a-hole. Weird your mother-in-law thinks this is her decision. Live your life, invite the family up for a nice lunch or dinner to show them the place. 33 miles isn't far at all, and if moving 33 miles brings your husband closer to work, it means he gets to spend more time at home with his family rather than commuting. Congratulations on the windfall. She'll get over it and will be telling all her friends how much she loves your new home before you know it. Thank you, I unfortunately only received the money because I lost the last of my grandparents last year, but that was one of the reasons we decided to get a little slice of paradise as soon as we could since life is so short. My Nana loved gardening and looked after me as a child while my parents both worked long hours, and I wanted to make sure my baby gets to see us all the time and I made sure the new place has a big enough garden that we can give her some of the same memories I have helping out with the plants. Not the a-hole. You've gotta just know mother-in-law. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not lying to my half-siblings after they asked why my relationship with my bio dad is strained? So, to give you a bit of a backstory that's kinda long, I'm going to sum it up. For the past 15 years of my life, my bio dad has needed to pay child support. The whole sum of it for those years and until I am 18 would only be $47,900. I'm 17 now and he has maybe paid only $20,000 in total by avoiding jobs on the books and even owns an illegal side hustle that is not registered as it should be. All to avoid child support. He preaches that he loves and cares for me, but never contacts me himself. He did for the first time in 7 years, that didn't involve my nana passing last year, when around Christmas, he asked me what I wanted, knowing that I am pagan and I only involve in the gift giving as it makes me feel good to give to others. I'm just kinda peeved off still that he asked the day before my family's Christmas Eve get together we have every year. If he cares so much. Why wait so long? The only time we talk anymore is when I call my half-siblings, who we will call Max and Alex. Max is 14 while Alex is 12. Max asked me why I don't spend much time with my bio dad when I'm over. I told him if I told him everything he wants to know, he may not like his dad anymore. He told me he still wants to know as it's not fair for me to keep everything away, as he can see it really made me depressed and highly anxiety ridden. He said he wants to be there for me since I am always there for him whenever he needs someone by his side. So I told him everything about what his mom and my bio dad did to me as a child, all the emotional abuse, it took me over an hour, and I honestly broke down and cried when I told him. I have abandonment issues and trust issues because of my bio dad, and now that Max knows. He told Alex and now the two of them won't talk to my bio dad and they do everything on their own, cooking their own food and doing their own things at home. But now I am a jerk for what I said because I should have just shut up and not said anything. My mom and stepdad stand by me and what I said, however none of my aunts and uncles support me telling my brothers what happened to me in my childhood after they both wanted to know, I told Alex after he came in the room after he heard my crying the room over. I'm now a big jerk and should tell them I lied for attention I'm apparently not getting at home. So reddit am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Your bio dad is an abusive deadbeat, and his wife is no better. It's not unusual for extended families to try to brush over or dismiss such things to avoid the drama or preserve their one big happy family narrative, but that doesn't make it right. I'm glad that your mom and stepdad support you, and that you have a relationship with your half-siblings. Stay strong and don't let anyone sway you from the truth. Not the a-hole. They asked and you were being honest with them. Maybe your bio dad shouldn't have been such an awful parent, then you wouldn't have any negative feelings towards him. And OP even warned the half-sibs that they may not like the truth, but they said they'd still want to know. He gave the sibs an out, and they wanted truth. I agree it's not OP's fault but is bio dad's fault. Bio dad seems to have loved getting one over on mom and saving money, more than he loved OP. 
not the a-hole, it sounds like the whole family needs some family sit-downs and open communication at the very least. For your half-brothers to apply your experience to how they see their dad now may not be fair to your dad, but it's hard not to empathize with someone one cares about. A lot of families like to ignore the unmentionable past and pretend it didn't happen. It's not healthy for anyone, especially those who were very hurt from it, of course. You shouldn't apologize for the truth of your feelings and your experience. If they don't want to be family enough to help you work through something that was ignored for so long, they're not emotionally mature enough to help your half-brothers, either. Toxic family is hard to work through, especially parents. It's complex and heavy. I would say that you can tell your half-brothers that your experience doesn't have to be theirs, but you appreciate their empathy for you. Not the a-hole. You may have wanted to soften the blow for the 12-year-old, but your bio dad has made this bed over decades. So far, he has manipulated public opinion to his benefit, but people like this often get away with their behavior, because they never have to face any consequences. He even made the reason of my not going to his house for 7 years was my mom's fault. I didn't go because he got nasty with me after I told him I only wanted to see my brothers and not spend the whole time with him. He told all my aunts this, and now my aunts hate my mom. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.